with Eastside Real Estate and today I have Frank Hinckley with Axia Loans and what we want to talk about is forbearance today just because you know the, with the economy as is right now you know um, people are out of jobs small businesses are you know affected with what's going on with the pandemic so I thought it would be a good time to maybe just talk about some of the options that are available if you are late on your payment or you have maybe you know some issues with payments so frank here today is here to answer questions hi frank hello julia and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come before you and sharing with your clients and your associates and i would definitely um be a huge advocate of you taking this message and <laughs> sharing it with as many people as possible because you don't know what information people are getting yes. and they are going to respond and react yes. more than likely to what they hear. It's a human nature thing. You just yes. react to what you hear and a lot of times it's not qualified. I'm fortunate in the position of working for a direct lender such as Axia Home Loans who is not only a direct lender to Fannie Freddie but we're a servicer on a very small scale and that puts me in the keen position of being able to comment mm -hmm. sincerely to forbearance and how it actually is impacting the United States housing market. Yes. So uh, the, the first question you had of me was, mm -hmm. you know, what is forbearance? Uh, you know, homeowners, they hear it. Uh, I promise you, people are going to misconstrue it. They're going to misinterpret it. And... That's just the way it is. So it's always good to seek out an expert. For sure. And that's what you're here for. Because I have seen a lot of, you know, comments on social media about, you know, what forbearance is and what you should do. And we don't want to hear things from social media. We want to hear it from an expert like you. So, yeah, please tell us, you know, if I have issues with mortgage payment, what options are there out there for homeowners? You bet. So technically... The definition of forbearance, uh -huh. that is when a borrower is allowed by the servicer to temporarily suspend the mortgage payment due to that servicer for a specific period of time. Plain and simple. That's it. So now we're going to talk about what happens, should you or should you not partake in it, and what is the fallout of forbearance. That's first off the definition. So basically you're being allowed to miss mortgage payments, but you will need to make them up later on down the road. They are not forgiven permanently. Okay, so if I feel like, you know, if, if I have issues with my payment, I should talk to my lender and find out exactly what options there are out there for me. Yes, and so let's be very clear mm -hmm. on distinguishing uh, technicalities here. Yes. When you have a mortgage, you are making your mortgage payment to what is called a servicer. Right. That servicer, by the way, does not hold your note. The note right. is the document you signed at closing, which commits you to the financial terms of the loan. Uh-huh. The servicer is responsible and is paid by the investor who holds that loan. That investor can be Fannie, Fre Fannie mm -hmm. Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae, or mm -hmm. FHA, or it can be another private investor. Mm -hmm. That investor does not care. If you are given, given or granted forbearance by the servicer, that servicer still has to make that payment to the investor. And herein lies a keen reason of why this is so detrimental to the U.S. economy. Yeah. Okay. Don't so servicing. You okay. contact them. Your yeah. mortgage statement, your online site. You go to your servicer, you call mm -hmm. the 800 number, and mm -hmm. you, you convey to them your hardship. It has to be a hardship, and it can be caused by the COVID-19 uh, circumstances. Okay. But I want to advise strongly to all people, you better be in a position where you cannot make your mortgage payment. So you've exhausted every possible means because – Going into a forbearance scenario, you're going to be making up those payments later on and the determining uh, factors in that note clearly spells out that servicer has the legal right 
to call the amount forbeared mm -hmm. all at one time or at terms that you need to understand as the mortgagee. Okay. Um, that can be a huge uh, impact into one's uh, housing budget. So, so, quest so question, people think that maybe with forbearance, it is a forgiven loan. So it is not forgiven. You pay back however correct. you arrange with your lender. What are some correct. of the so options to pay back the loan? So it is not for free, not, not free money here. We want to Correct. Make and not only is it not free, so for example, yeah. your housing payment's $2,000. Mm -hmm. Every month you forbear that payment, Okay. that is accumulating on the back side of the note. Okay. So if you miss five payments, you owe $10,000. Uh -huh. that, that servicer can then, when this all comes out, and we get back to normal, which could uh -huh. be a year, a year and a half. So imagine payments. Right. Well, you could be twelve, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars behind. Uh huh. That in, that servicer can say, "I want all that money right now, with all the accrued interest that is right. due, which uh -huh. is going to be dramatic." And how many people can afford to do that? Yes, that's a crazy no. amount. Yeah. Exactly. So then the servicer, I promise you, is going to come back and say, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make your new housing payment based off the original $2,000, but then a prorated amount of that fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 past due, right. and you're going to add it to your housing payment. Could take uh, you up to 3000 okay. And again, if you can't meet it, the terms of the note clearly spells out. Yeah. They can put you in default and you can be foreclosed on. Right. Okay. That's that those are those are good. You know, it's good to have people understand, you know, for parents because I feel like, you know, with all that's going on in social media, some of some of the homeowners actually think that it's a forgiven debt. So it's good that to know upfront that it is not forgiven, it is tagged to the back of your loan in whichever yeah. way that the lender has agreed to do that. Correct. And oh. you know, you, you brought, you touch on something that's really important. I want to just mm -hmm. hit on it. If it is any issue in your life, be it legal, accounting, mortgage lending, right. real estate, you go to an expert. Mm -hmm. You don't go on the internet <laughs> to find help. Mm -hmm. That's where you shop for consumer goods. Mm -hmm. You are taking too much of a risk with too much of your lifestyle and of your life savings mm -hmm. to take a chance by going by social media. Seek out an expert. That's what, they, you know, they, they are certified, they're licensed, they're bonded, and they have to take continual education to always make sure that they're giving sound, prudent advice. Yes. Well, okay. yeah. Thank you so much, Frank. And I think I have one last question. So assuming if you went with forbearance and you cannot meet those payments and you have mentioned that then you go into foreclosure. So a way a note reads is mm -hmm. if you fall behind your mortgage payment, 90 days, three mm -hmm. payments, you are technically going into what is known as notice of default, NOD. Mm -hmm. You'll receive an NOD by your servicer. That means that you're in default of the terms of the loan. Once you get that milestone reached, you are now in the process where that servicer can start the legal process of foreclosing. They don't want to foreclose, believe me. Yeah. Servicers are not in the business of taking real estate back. They want the payments because like I said, they still have to make payments to the investor. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you never want to go past 30 days because that affects your credit. You don't go back 60 days because it really impacts your credit. Once yeah. you hit 90, you're technically in an NOD, notice of default uh, mm -hmm. dynamic. Um, so yeah, you got to seek help at that point in time. The main thing to also think about is what you need to be looking out for when you're talking about forbearance is that has to be the last resort. Yeah. And if you do it, this is another thing a lot of people don't understand. Forbearance may not be reported, and it's a key word, may not be reported by the servicer 
to the repositories, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. That's the mm -hmm. credit bureaus. It may not be reported, but it's likely it'll be noted on the credit underneath that servicing, and it'll say borrower in forbearance. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, it is what it is, but now you're going to have a huge hill to climb trying to acquire premier credit. Mm -hmm. And you're really going to be in a situation where trying to secure a mortgage, be it a refinance or a purchase, um, because that's one step away from defaulting on your loan. So they're going to need to have documentation as to what led up to it. Well, we all know what that's been. And even though it doesn't report 30, 60, or 90 days late, mm -hmm. it's enough of a warning to a service or to a mortgage lender such as Axia, where you're going to just cause yourself a lot of hardship and extra work. So I'm a, you know, I'm a big believer in just doing everything you can to keep your credit clean. That's the number one tool you have as a consumer mm -hmm. to put yourself in the position of leverage, being in a position of strength. So when you come to, for you and you want to, uh, you know, go out and buy a home or mm -hmm. come to me and you want to, you know, ask for a loan to refinance, um, you know, car loans, consumer loans, those, those are usually smaller. And, you know, if you get hit with a higher rate, you know, hopefully it's temporary and you can move on, but uh, you got to be really careful here. And it's a great opportunity to be able to share this with you and share it with your, uh, your sphere of influence. Um, and I'm, I really appreciate you opening this venue up because, you know, I love to be able to sit down and consult people more than anything else. I mean, it's great doing loans, but the best part is working with people like yourself and with consumers that are trying to navigate. Well, thank you so much, Frank. I really do appreciate your insights on forbearing. And people out there watching this video, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, myself, or reach out to Frank Hinckley. I'll post our information right here on this video afterwards. Sound good? Absolutely. Hopefully, next time, we can do one on what is really kind of the, at the forefront right now, mm -hmm. rates. What's going on with rates? How are they determined? Because it's not like it used to be, and that would be a great topic to discuss. Yes, so let's do that next week. How's that? Sounds good. I'd love Sounds to do good. it. Okay, so viewers, next week with Frank Hinckley, we're going to talk about interest rates. Mm -hmm.